Thank you for coming today, guys. Uh, I'm Seungwon Lee. I'm working in Android line client part in Korean division. And I'm going to share my experience of implementing a video editing module in line application. <coughs> In this session, uh, it is the topics of in this session, and it is about video editing uh, on Android. And after this, I'm gonna share my uh, my lessons that I learned. Okay, the first thing is why do we need a server bullet? I think you guys to spend much time, much time with Line. Actually, I'm not because my Korean friends don't use Line well. What a shame. Anyway, I also expect you guys to spend lots of, lots of videos in Line. Yes, that's right. Video sharing is highly increasing nowadays. Only inside the chat room, you can post a timeline and video profile. Moreover, Line keeps trying to in, uh, keeps trying to upgrade our services, and Line recently released the new service new service to overlay Line stickers on video. Have you tried this? I did so much work to make this project. Anyway, including this service, there are many video processing features in Line. However, unfortunately, I had many problems in our video processing. One of the major critical problem was the shared video was scrambled on the specific devices. It means that the scrambled video happens only on device A, the green video happens only on device B, and processing of video fails only on device C. As you can see, the problem were dependent on each device, so it was really hard to solve those problems with a single solution, and it was really hard to figure out what is the root cause, so I gave up to find the general solution. Instead, I made a blank list. The blank list is the list that have a problem in a video processing. For, uh, for a device in blank list, a video processing is bypassed. So original video is directly shared any, uh, without any processing. At first, the number was very small, so I could manage those. But time goes, you know what happened. Yes, the list got bigger and bigger, and, and last, I couldn't manage those devices anymore. Moreover, there was one mobile company. Most of their phone had a problem in video processing. So I and my team are very scared about new launching uses of their phone. Anyway, the risk keeps increasing and I didn't have a silver bullet to resolve those issues. So I thought there is no hope in current video processing. By the way, during the overwork of one day, I constantly find an open source project. It is Android Transcoder. It is uh, transcoding a video on Android side, and it is fully utilized uh, Android framework APIs, so I didn't need to care about the Android device hardware specification. Also, it supports uh, OpenGL renderer. I will explain about it later. I tested blacklist devices with this Android transcoder. So I found out the result was far better than existing video processor in line. Uh, I thought it could be a silver bullet in current video processing in line application. So I decided to switch the legacy video processor to Android transcoder. Before we get into the more details, 
uh, there is a, we had to know some basic terms and concepts and what is video, video, video transcoding. Even though you came to here to see some shiny gorgeous video editing demo. Okay. Next chapter is what should we know in advance? Before we get into video things, uh, let me take an example of my snowboarding video. I took it at the Switzerland. Please enjoy the beautiful moment. Ah! Ah! I slipped so hard, but I was so happy. Fun? Okay, this is the information of my snowboarding video. The video format is MP4, video codec is H.264, and audio codec is AAC. Uh, I will explain the detail of this concept. <coughs> a video is consists of a sequence of still images. One single image we call as a frame. <coughs> and because Video frame size are too big, so we need to reduce the data size of video, so we can use codec. A codec is kind of compression algorithm, uh, such as ZIP, RAR, and TAR. We can use codec to reduce this series of video frames of data size. We call this process encoding. And H.264 is commonly used codec. And decoding is simply opposite of encoding. It decompress uh, the encoded video into a series of video frames, which can we can play or edit with. And we can do the same thing with an audio track. AAC is a commonly used audio codec. Then how do we keep them together, audio and video track? There is a Video format. A video format is a kind of container storing audio and video track together. For example, there is an MKV and MP4. If you want to know more details about containers and codec, you can find more than hundreds of codec and container. Please visit Wikipedia. Lastly, what does it mean transcoding? It is transcoding and simply we can say transfer encoding. We, uh, we can change a codec of audio and videos. It means transcoding. Uh, it usually happens when an app shares a video to others. Let me take an example. My phone don't have a codec of Bobils and VPA, but my friend wants to share a video uh, encoded with those three. So my friend need to convert the codec to common another codec, such as H.264 and AAC. We usually convert the codec of video and audio like this. It is transcoding. Okay, now you know what a video format and codec, what is a transcoding. Uh, I'm going to explain how does Android Transcoder is implemented on Android side using Android Framework APIs. It is going to be more deeper. It is overall structure of Android Transcoder. I want to ask how many of you are familiar with this, project, this process. Would you raise your hand if you know all about this? Okay, thank you. Uh, because there are many people are not familiar with this general transcoding, so please excuse me. It might be boring, but after this chapter, I prepared so much interesting stories for here. Uh, one thing we need to focus is Android transcoder supports OpenGL renderer. In between decoding and encoding, we can manipulate a video frame 
and we can do many interesting things uh, from this rendering part. One thing we can do is the adjusting of video frame size on this rendering part. I will explain it later. Okay, we can divide Android transcoder into three components. Let's start the first part of extracting and decoding. How does Android transcoder decode a video? The first component is extractor. Android transcoder uses video extractor of Android framework API. Uh, video extractor helps us to query the metadata of video and audio tracks. In this case, by using media extractor, we can figure out the container is the MP4 and audio track is included with AAC and video track is included H.264. And another role of media extractor is to read included sample data of audio and video tracks. And it is important that we have to separate the audio and video track because the audio data stream should be passed to the audio decoder and video data stream should be passed to the video decoder separately. For actual video and audio extracting, you can use read sample data API. This API retrieves the included data stream of audio and video track and it returns its size. And you can use another API of get sample, get sample time. It returns the current position time of data stream in microseconds. And there is another API advanced method. We can advance to the next chunk of data stream using this. And we can call reader sample data. We can get this encoded video frame. And call advance and read sample data again, again, again. We can call this end of streams. And the next components are the coder. Android transcoder use video codec of Android framework APIs. For, uh, by using media codec, we, uh, we can encode and decode audio, uh, audio and video tracks. It is used together with video extractor and media boxer. Then how does Android transcode, transcoder does, uh, decode a uh, video using media extractor and video codec together? Uh, we've just got this encoded video stream and encoded audio stream using video extractor. But we're gonna focus only on video stream. This video stream is gonna uh, input of video decoder. A uh, video decoder is actually an instance of video codec. We're gonna pass this in encoded video frame to the decoder. First, we request the input, the input buffer. It is emptied because the video decoder will generate the decoded video frame with this input buffer. And we're gonna fill this input buffer with the encoded video information. And there is a surface Surface is a kind of buffer that holds the video frame. Uh, Android Transcoder uses this surface because uh, it improves the codec performance. It means GPU will be used, not CPU, for decoding. And when finished this decoding of video frame in decode, decoder side, the video frame will be copied into our surface then we can get a callback on frame or better level. Uh, EPTA used this video frame on our video renderer side. The surface will release this buffer 
back to the decoder if it is no longer used. And the next part is rendering part. I'm going to focus how a video frame is drawn. Uh, you can assume the output surface and frame buffer input surface is a kind of buffer. A video frame will be drawn on those. A video frame will be copied into output surface first, and the video frame from the output surface will be drawn to the frame buffer. After rendering a video frame is finished, a video frame from frame buffer is in, uh, drawn into the input surface. As I said previously, uh, we can do many interesting things in this rendering part, such as filtering a video frame and overlay sticker on video frame. And we're going to focus on how to resize a video frame on this rendering part. Okay, as you know, resizing a video frame is heavy computation. So, OpenGL is specialized to do kind of things. So now, output surface and input surface are bound with the current OpenGL environment. So, we can draw a video frame among those surface and frame buffer. This is a frame, video frame of my snowboarding video. The resolution is like this. Our full surface of decoder holds a pixel data of video frame. And we prepare the frame buffer with the size of 540 wide by 960 high. Then we're going to draw a video frame of our surface into the frame buffer. Uh, we can resize this video frame uh, by drawing into smaller frame buffer. And we can draw it again into the input surface of encoder. The encoder will compress this video frame with encoding algorithm. And it is almost done. The next part is encoding and muxing. It is a similar way to manage the buffer to the decoder. We have just resized the video frame into an input surface. We're going to uh, request this resize the video frame as an encoder's input. Then encoder will generate encoded video frame as an output. Then we're going to pass this output buffers to our muxer. The muxer will combine these encoded buffers into a single video container. And we can request the release output buffers when it is no longer used. And the last part is the muxer. Android transcoder use media muxer of Android API. Media Muxer combines the encoded audio and video stream and assembles those into a single container. Currently, Media Muxer supports the video containers such as MP4, WEB, and 3GP. You can find the more supported container in the Android official site. For using Media Muxer, you can call write sample data method to pass encoded video and audio stream. Uh, it is important we need to pass these encoded buffers uh, by the order that is encoder delivers to the box. Okay, are you sleepy guys? Uh, the difficult part is almost done. Okay. It was, uh, it was all about Android transcoder. If you understand of this Android transcoder, then you can say you are the master of transcoder. 
Okay, let's get back to the end read transcoder. It was a good time to get rid of uh, the existing legacy transcoder and switch it to it to end read transcoder because end read transcoder works very well even though with the blacklisted devices. However, it was impossible to use Android transcoder as it is. There were several reasons. The first reason was Android transcoder doesn't support any features about audio manipulation. But Line requires the audio sample for resizing a audio sample rate. So I need to implement a new layer of sampling on audio. And another requirement of line is about video editing with line sticker. I need to implement a new layer of uh, overlaying line stickers. And lastly, Android transcoder had stopped for many years, so I didn't expect, I couldn't expect the, any support. So that is, that is the reason I hesitate to contribute to the project. So I decided to renovate the Android transcoder to the new one. The project name is Cruiser. This is the name of my best friend. It cheers me up whenever I finish the night work. Okay, let's investigate what is Cruiser and what is different from Android transcoder. The first version of Cruiser was uh, mainly about audio sampling. I extended Android the transcoder to be able to adjust the sample rate of audio. And I also added several APIs for transcoding policy. The transcoding, transcoding policy includes several parameters such as uh, codec, bitrate, and resolution, trim lanes, and so on. Uh, so I added a new layer for sampling on audio. The audio sampler is for increasing or reducing the sample rate of an audio. But it is usually used for reducing the bitrate of an audio track. There is a music with 320 kbps. You can decode sampling and encoding again. You can get the bitrate of 96 kbps with the same music. It means we can reduce the uh, we, we can reduce the data size of video I and mean audio audio data. Uh, main model of this audio sampler is based on third party third, third party library as shown here. On Cruiser 1.0, you can. Uh, we can do basic video edit. You can change codec or bitrate code or resolution and trim the video. Also, we can mute an audio track. For the next version of Cruiser 1.0, I added new feature for overlaying line stickers on video. After this feature released with only static line sticker, I heard the usage of line sticker increase 150%. Okay, for doing this, I added a new layer of overlaying sticker. Uh, I will explain the details. It is the stage of rendering a video. It is a similar way to resize a video frame as you seen previous. As we know, there is a pixel data of, from upper surface of decoder. We draw this video frame into frame buffer, and Cruiser loads the sticker as a bitmap instance. And Cruiser converts this bitmap instance into a kind of OpenGL object. 
and cruiser road cruiser draw this open zero object on the top of a frame buffer. Lastly, cruiser passes these frames into input surface of encoder. In the same way, cruiser can overlay several stickers on a video frame. Okay, let's talk about the blacklist. Blacklist the uh, main cause I started the cruiser project. Can you guess what happened in the blacklist? There is no blacklist in the cruiser. I thought this was happy ending. But life isn't easy sometimes, but I can beat and read the fragmentation. The last part is troubleshooting. There were several issues I'm implementing a cruiser, but I picked just five issues. The first is quality issue. Can you see the difference? On a specific Android model, I found out the video quality became very low after transcoding. The reason was a video profile. A video profile is a kind of configuration of decoding and encoding, especially a compression rate. Usually, we don't need to care about it because encoding in the device use the high quality profile, then encoding in cruiser also use same quality profile. But funny thing is, one specific Android model changes this video profile when I transcoding it. So I took this video on that device camera. It was high profile, but it, it became a base profile. It is the same bitrate, but as you can see, the quality is quite different. So lesson of this issue is you have to set the video profile at the encoder explicitly every time. And the next is video orientation issue. Uh, the left side video is ori original video, and right side video is rotate, rotated after transcoding. Uh, it was one specific device happened. It is the same device in the previous slide. There is a uh, video with the orientation 90 degree. Cursor has to set this orientation value to the boxer. So cruiser extract this orientation value and keep this orientation value to the boxer. But almost the device ignored this orientation value at the encoder, even though cruiser set the, this orientation value explicitly. But one specific Android model didn't ignore this orientation value. So video was rotated additional 90 degree. As a result, cruiser got rotated video. So lesson of this issue, we shouldn't set the orientation value at the encoder we, if we don't have any special reason. And there is audio track issues. The first one is zero BPS issue. The left side video is original video. <laughs> and right side video is transcoded video, but audio has distorted. <laughs> Okay, the original audio bitrate is 128 kbps. So we can extract this original bitrate using video extractor. With the default transcoding policy, 
Cruiser transcoded this audio track to 96 kbps. If the original audio bitrate less than 96 kbps, then Cruiser just reused this audio bitrate for encoding. But there was one Android model. It returns bitrate as a zero bps. So zero BPS is used for encoding, so the audio has distorted. So in this case, uh, uh, there is no way to figure out what is the original bitrate of audio. So unfortunately, Cruiser has to assume this original bitrate as a 96 kbps. So Lesson about this issue is we need to keep in mind that there is a possibility of returning a zero value depending on Android device. And next is sync issue. Left side video is also original video. And right side video is transcoded video, but the audio and video are out of sync. The baby is singing, but audio sound is already passed. Uh, as I mentioned, Cruiser use a mixer to combine encoded audio and video stream. Cruiser passes this output buffer to the boxer, and the buffer will be released if it is no longer used. Again and again. But at the first of uh, transcoding process, boxer starts with an initialized state. So the buffer couldn't be passed. The buffer couldn't be passed to the boxer and cruiser wait for several milliseconds until boxer is ready. So cruiser copy this output purpose to the queue until boxer is ready. After boxer is ready, cruiser passes this output buffer from the queue to boxer, and the buffer from the queue is firstly fitted to the boxer. After the queue is empty, the buffer from encoder is passed to the boxer directly, and cruiser doesn't use the queue anymore. But the thing is, when cruiser passes this output buffer from the queue to boxer, the buffer will not release until it is delivered to the boxer. So I believe the encoder wouldn't release the output buffer until it uh, until it is delivered to the boxer. But in specific device, the encoder released the output buffers before, Q, before cruiser passed this output buffer from the queue to boxer, boxer. So cruiser just passed the empty output buffer from the queue to boxer. So the audio and video are out of sync. So resolve this issue, Cruiser allocates extra buffer memory and deeply copy this output buffer, this output buffer for, uh, to the extra memory. And after boxer is ready, Cruiser passed this extra buffer to the boxer and after boxer is starting, cruiser doesn't use this queue anymore. So lesson over this issue, we need to careful about handling the buffers of encoder. Especially the release timing of buffers is important. Okay, the last issue, the audio distortion issue. The left side video is original video. And 
right side video is transcoded video but audio has distortion. It is a little similar with previous audio distortion but the cause was different. Uh, the original audio bitrate is 96k bps. Well, one specific device, there was a pre-installed gallery application. Uh, after the app trimmed this video, the original audio bitrate became 123k bps. I got the, this value from file analysis, and I also got the value 24 from video extractor. It was a little, little tricky to find what is the cause of this problem because when playing this trimmed video is worked well. But I seems it is the bug on gallery application and it isn't fixed yet. Normally Cruiser transcode the audio track like this. To resolve this issue, when Cruiser detect this weird 24K BPS of audio track, then Cruiser bypass this audio stream to the boxer directly. So lesson of this issue is, we need to handle the strange input values. Okay, until now I briefly addressed the, the, some issues of Android fragmentation. What is the most important we have learned is do not count on any Android devices. You are the only hope. Believe yourself. Okay, let me level my presentation. Do you think I have a find a server overlay? In some part, yes, because Cruiser don't have any blank list now, and there is less than 10% of transcoding failure. But as you shown here, there are still many device bugs in Android devices. So I'm still looking, I'm still working to resolve those issues. So I can say I'm still progress to find a silver bullet. So the next version of Cruiser is we're gonna launch new features of uh, overlaying animated sticker on a static image and crop and rotate video. And Cruiser will run with multi-threaded components. So last comment is, we are looking for join our team. Omae ore no nakamani nare. Thank you for listening.